Today we're going to look at a technique that few organic students seldom see, and this is the use of a soxalate extractor. This is a soxalate extractor. These come in all sizes. I've seen some that are maybe 10 to 15 times this big, and some of them are really tiny as well. And what they do is a very important function. Now we're going to uh, extract a triglyceride called trimeristin from commercially available nutmeg. Uh, this is a spice that you can buy just about in any store. We bought this at the village market. This is a, a material that European countries sent explorers over to to colonize places in the Far East where this was available. And this is a very important spice historically and also it's, uh, it's something nice for for, cons for consumption. What we get out of it is a material called trimeristin. Okay, now the, the ground nutmeg is a brownish color, but this stuff is, when it's purified, it, it purifies to white solid, and this is what we're going to extract out of that nutmeg matrix. Okay, now the apparatus we're going to use is what we call a soxlet extractor and I'll assemble that for you. But since we're dealing with methylene chloride, we've got to make sure that we use uh, protection. We're going to use uh, our rubber gloves, of course. We'll put those on. Okay. And I've taken the liberty to put about 150 milliliters of methylene chloride into this round bottom flask over here. I also put in a couple of boiling stones to facilitate boiling. And the soxid extractor, this piece of apparatus, uh, operates on the basis of continual extraction, which uh, we'll demonstrate. And what we do is we're going to put the nutmeg in one of these uh, thimbles. Now, these thimbles are made of, as you can see from the box, cellulose. And that's the same stuff that they make filter paper out of. Okay, So this is a piece of filter paper simply molded to fit the uh, well in the soxlet extractor. You can see, th there it is. It's slightly higher dimension than this little uh, tube that goes here. We'll see that this is an important part of the soxlet extraction apparatus. Let's put that away. And I measured about 12 grams of the ground nutmeg into one of these thimbles. And that's going to go in there like that. And then I'm going to put this apparatus together like this. I don't need to stir this methylene chloride. But what I have done is to, uh, to take the leads from the condenser here, which fits in the top of this, uh, to, and, put, and lead them into a, a chilled water circulator outside the hood because uh, if you operate this for a long time you have to make sure that the water coming in is very cold because methylene chloride itself boils at about 42 degrees which is uh, 5 degrees above body temperature so you have to make sure that you condense the methylene chloride effectively and that's what this is going to do so all I have to do now is to turn the apparatus on and just let me explain what you're going to see. The methylene chloride here is going to be heated by the uh, the heating mantle and the vapors are going to come up through this tube and they're going to be condensed in this condenser. This is called an aligned condenser and then they're going to drip directly down into the uh, thimble which is full of the ground nutmeg. What will happen then is that this will filter through this uh, cellulose and then get up to about here volume wise in this well and then f uh, flow back down into the 250 ml round bottom. And that will do that as many times as you want. I've run these things overnight actually and uh, they're very very efficient just as long as you make sure that the solvent is being effectively condensed in that aligned condenser. These can go for days if you want and that's what is effective about this. It can be run without a without a supervision 
that's necessary for a lot of other operations in the organic lab. Okay, we're about halfway through an extraction. You can see the methylene chloride being condensed from the aligned condenser on top and dropping directly down into the solid which is in that, uh, that thimble. And the extract is coming out a little bit brown. That's, that's okay, it's taking in some impurities, but that's okay. It's now about halfway through and we're just going to have to wait until the level of the solvent gets up to the point where this, this tube makes a turn downward again. Okay. Notice that there is no solid coming through the thimble and that's because it is a piece of filter paper. That's what a filter paper is designed for. Okay. And so that's what's happening right now. The level of the solvent in the round bottom flask is going down. Because, why? Because the solvent is being evaporated up into that condenser and filling up the thimble. But eventually that thimble is going to fill up to the point where the, sol the solvent will uh, drain out once again back down into the round bottom flask and then over and over and over again depending upon how long you want it to go. I'm just going to let this go a couple of cycles. Uh, for this demonstration, but you will appreciate that if you have a very low solubility material in a solid matrix like we have here, that this is an ideal technique for extracting out that low solubility material. Okay, now as you can see, we're nearing the end of one extraction cycle, and the level of the solvent has gotten up to the place where this uh, um, narrow glass tube then goes down. And you'll see what happens, why this is called continuous extraction, because in a short while, this is really almost fun to watch. It can be mesmerizing. If you have nothing else to do, you can stare at this. You can hypnotize yourself. Here it goes. Oh, okay. Here it goes. You see? It empties. And then the cycle will start all over again. And uh, this has got to warm up because this was cold down here. But eventually, you see, it's starting to fill up again. And it will reach the, that level, drain back down again and again and again. So as long as the solvent is uh, kept from evaporating out of the apparatus, you can run this thing indefinitely. And the neat thing about this is that uh, if you start out with about two, 200 mils of methylene chloride, uh, you'll wind up with 200 mils of methylene chloride and whatever is extracted into it that was uh, in the matrix of the nutmeg that we had in the thimble. And then you just strip that down and you're left with the uh, impure trimeristin, which you can do whatever you need to do with it, recrystallize it, saponify it, that sort of thing. So this continually does this, and it seems to have picked up uh, a little bit of speed here. But uh, that's really what Soxlet extraction is all about. It's a continuous extraction which uh, is very, very efficient and doesn't need to be monitored to, uh, to uh, strictly. And as long as you got things set up, just let her go. I thought just for grins that uh, I'd like to see if we actually extracted anything uh, with just two passes through the Soxlet extraction procedure. And so I took the, uh, the solvent, methylene chloride, in that 250 milliliter round bottom flask and put it on a rotary evaporator. And I just removed the methylene chloride. Now methylene chloride boils at 42, so it's really easy to get rid of. And I just wanted to see if there was anything, any type of residue in there. And uh, put it on here. Although it might not be easy to see from where you are right now, but there is, there is a, uh, a, uh, an oily residue in there. And I'm going to let that go for just a short while, okay, to get most of the methylene chloride off. And I'm going to see if we can actually solidify this material. Because after all, the trimeristin is a, it's a solid. And so we'll see what we can do with it. 
Okay. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's stop this spinning here. Turn that off and break the vacuum. Okay, broken. And we turn off the aspirator. We have to be careful now. We're not drawing any vacuum on that flask, so that might come off. So we got to be uh, watchful of that. Okay, so here's what we extracted. Now those those black things in there are, of course, the uh, the boiling stones that we put in there to facilitate boiling. But let's see if we can get this to solidify. I got some ice right here, and I'm going to put it in there. See if we can get this to solidify. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'll let that cool down. Okay. And there it goes. Okay. So you can see that we did extract with just two passes uh, through the oxalate procedure. We did extract out some solid. Now we know that trimeristin itself is a solid. So if we were to recrystallize this, and then check the infrared spectrum of it with the trimeristin that we got from a previous procedure, they probably look the same. Okay? So that shows us that our Soxlet extraction procedure was probably successful.